So if you look at the front of um, your packet, it has um, seven things here. Federalism, separation of powers, checks and balances, popular sovereignty, republicanism, limited government, and individual rights. These right here are the principles of government. These right here. Um, we are only focusing really on the first five because these are taught differently. These are your Bill of Rights. And this is like really can't be tested because the entire Constitution shows how the um, we limit the, the power of the government. So these are um, the ones we focus on. Um, we'll do them in this order. Popular sovereignty republicanism are super, super easy. Um, we'll focus on these three. This is how you will be tested on this. Um, you'll get a quote from the actual Constitution, and then you are going to tell me what principle of government it is. Which one of these is it? And so I'm going to teach you how to do that. And today we're going to start with federalism. That is the first one we're going to do. And, um, and then I'm going to show you on this chart um, the ways to make this um, a lot easier. Okay. As long as you follow my guide of what I'm teaching y'all, I promise you I can make this easy and you will be successful. Okay. All right. So you'll turn to where it says federalism. You are successful today if you can tell me the ingredients for federalism. Okay. All right. So go to this second page right here. So this is another way to think about federalism. What are some of the decisions that your parents make that they do not ask you at all? What would be an example? Like, did you um, help them decide where y'all live? No. So like, um, where you live. That might be a decision made just by parents. Um, what job they have. Um, and this can change per family. Think about decisions that you and your parents maybe make together. Um, do sometimes y'all decide together what you're going to have for dinner or um, where what you might do that day for entertainment or what movie you might watch? That might be an example of decisions y'all make together. And then decisions made by teenagers. Of course, it depends on households. But how many of you decided what you were going to wear today on your own? A lot of you decide what clothes you were going to wear. Sometimes those powers are powers your parents or a parent just said, uh, you can figure that out on your own. You have the power to choose your own clothes. Or maybe you have the power to choose your friends or choose um, what you are going to have for a snack when you get home. Okay. So there are things that your parents let you decide on your own. There are some things that they will talk out with you. Maybe um, you want to join uh, an after-school club. You might be talking that out with a parent. And then there's things, they're going to be like, I don't care. Uh, you have no decision in this. I'll decide. That is very similar to federalism. So I'm going to give you like a definition that basically it's a pretty easy definition of what federalism is. And this has recently been a major fight in the news since COVID started. And I'll give you an example of that soon. So federalism is powers. And of course, we're always talking about that. Federalism, of course, is a huge fight between your federalists and your anti-federalists. We're back to them again. Powers divided and shared between the federal and state governments. That is your definition of federalism. Now I will say this in the actual constitution, Instead of saying what the federal government can do, it's kind of rough because they say a lot of times what the states can't do. So uh, states, you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do this. And you know what that means? We, the federal government, can. So I think that's just my opinion. I think it's kind of rough the way they put it. And we're actually going to read parts of the Constitution. So you're going to see how it kind of like, I don't know, to me it's kind of harsh the way they start out. Um, so here's an example of federalism, education. Y'all have to take a star test, right? Nobody else in the United States takes a star test. 
but don't get worried. Everyone takes a state test, but the power of education goes to the um, states. That power was not given to the federal government. So each state decides what you learn. So uh, a couple years ago, I got a student from Virginia. I think it was Virginia. In eighth grade, they were learning world history. So they came to me in January and were like not doing United States history. Why was Virginia doing something totally different than y'all? Because it's up to the states to decide. Okay. So if this is a state power, guess what happened during COVID? The federal government was trying to say like when schools should shut down or open or this or that. Well, the governors, the leaders of each state were like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Education is a state power. You can't tell us what to do when it comes to the education of our citizens. And so that was like in the news a lot, like governors and like um, people like the president and Congress, the federal government, they were like arguing um, over education because they were like, no, our constitution does not say you can tell the federal government can tell us when to go back to school. That is the state power. So there are states that use federalism and the constitution and said, um, for example, none of our students will go back in school until November 1st. Why can some states not have their kids go back till November 1st? Because that's a state power and they can do that. Your state of Texas gave that power to actually the individual school districts. So school districts, Dickinson, your school district got to decide when you came back to school. Um, and it was different for each school district. So education was a power. So imagine y'all know what this is. We talked a little bit about this before. See this? Y'all know what that is. So if this is federal power and this is state power, the power of education goes right here under state power. Um, and then what this does is, okay, federal power, you get this, federal, you get to do this, you get to do this, get federal government, this, 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 this. The Constitution will tell us what their powers are. If it doesn't say it in the Constitution, that power automatically goes to the states. But what's new with this new Constitution is they get to share some power. So like taxes... That used to be just for the states under the Articles of Confederation, but not anymore. They get to share it. So I'm an adult in this country. I pay federal taxes and state taxes. So now our federal government won't be embarrassingly broke like the Articles of Confederation. So what do they do with those taxes? They are able to pay our military. They're able to, all these planes and these weapons our military has, that's paid for with our taxes. Um, when we have roads, we have some people in America, Americans who struggle. So we um, are able to provide welfare, which is like money to help them get out of a bad situation. All of this is paid with federal tax money um, because now the federal government can tax. So um, that is an example oh, down here of a um, shared power. Declaring war has to be given to the federal government. We don't want to wake up and find out Louisiana declared war with Guatemala. They can't do that. That's against the Constitution. That would be crazy. Only our federal government can do that. There are a lot more powers, but I will tell you as students, y'all don't need to know every power. You don't have to memorize every power. That would be an crazy. You want to go to college and get a political science degree? Then yes, start memorizing, but you don't have to do that. Here are some examples. Okay, before we get started today, I need to make sure y'all, this is what y'all don't get confused about. Remember how federal, national, central, and United States all mean the same thing? Can y'all not forget that? I know that can be rough, but don't forget that. So here's um, what we'll do. I want you to make me a bowl of federalism. Here's our bowl, right? Federalism. Okay. Imagine I'm asking you for a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I want y'all to go make me a peanut butter jelly sandwich. You bring me back two pieces of bread with peanut butter in it. Why am I mad? You didn't put any jelly in it. Do I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if I just have peanut butter? No, I don't. I don't 
can't have federalism unless I have state and federal powers. Unless I'm talking about these two things, you did not make me a bull of federalism. Now, what are our other words for federal? U.S., United States, national, and central. Just like this list up here. And I'm sorry that we give. Think about this. Peanut butter. Do y'all know the Jiffy brand? Jiffy brand peanut butter? Then there's like Kroger brand peanut butter, Peter Pan. But they're all peanut butter, right? Well, this has different names, but it's all federal government. So I don't care what brand of federal government you put into my bowl. You better just give me some federal government along with state governments. That together gives me a bowl of federalism. That makes federalism. So let's practice. Here are a whole bunch of groups. I want, we are going to circle what is federalism. So for example, national, state, and federal. Does this give me, does that make a bowl of federalism? Imagine this. I ask you for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you give me a sandwich with peanut butter and a whole lot of extra jelly. Do I still have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yes, you just gave me extra jelly. You can give me extra federal or state, but as long as I have those two ingredients, I have federalism. So national, state, and federal, does that give me a bowl of federalism? Yes, because I have the ingredient of state, and I have national, federal, whatever brand. I have two different brands of peanut butter, but it doesn't matter. That makes a bowl of federalism. State and state. Do I have a bowl of federalism? Don't say anything. I'm going to count to three and you're going to tell me. Does state and state make a bowl of federalism? One, two, three. No, I'm missing an ingredient. This is not federalism. Let's try federal. National, central. Does this make a bowl of federalism? I'm going to catch a three and you just give me a yes or no. Is this federalism? One, two, three. Nope. Cross that out. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to see if you can circle which of these gives me a bowl of federalism. Try it on your own. 30 seconds, go. Okay, that was a fast three seconds. Um, central and state, do I have a bowl of federalism? Do I have state? That's one ingredient. Is central the same as federal, national, United States? Yes. Remember, central is just a different brand of peanut butter. But is it, so if this is peanut butter and this is jelly, Okay, do I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Do I have federalism? I do. I Remember, this is just different brands of peanut butter. Give me any brand, but I just need federal and state. So this right here makes federalism. What about state and federal? I'll count to three. You tell me. One, two, three. Yes. What about United States and states? Does that make federalism? One, two, three. Ooh, we're not sure. United States is a different brand of peanut butter. United States is a what we call our federal government, our United States government. All the states united together. That means our whole country. That is, um, that does make federalism. What about United States, states, and United States? Yes. I just have some extra um, peanut butter, but it, is still federalism. What about United States and federal? Do I have states in here anywhere? No. And don't tell me because I see states there. United States is our whole entire country. States is just one state, Texas. So United States and Texas is not the same thing. Okay. Ready to apply this? Let's go read the United States Constitution. Flip over your page. I'm going to read this to you and you're going to say, I have no idea what she just read. 
Some of you, depending on your level of learning, may comprehend it. But I have, um, I don't expect you to see your first quote from the Constitution and be like, oh my gosh, I just totally understand that. We know that they wrote things um, that are difficult. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any imposts or duties on imports or exports. And the net produce of all duties and imposts laid by any state on imports or exports shall be for the use of the Treasury of the United States. And all such laws shall be subject to the revision and control of Congress. A lot of you are thinking, I have no idea what that lady just read. Now, I'm telling you today is our first principle. And I'm also telling you that they're all federalism. I just taught you the way to look for federalism. I told you you're going give, to be given something like this on a test, and you have to tell me which principle is this. Federalism, popular sovereignty, republicanism, checks or balance or separation of powers. Well, you haven't learned any of the other ones. But this is how we go through this. Let's find our ingredients. Do you all see our ingre what are our ingredients for federalism? We know state's one of them, right? Oh my God, look, there it is. Now, do I see any, what are some other ones? Oh, I, where'd you see that? Oh, yep, United States right there. Oh, I got some extra jelly, their state. So this is how we know, and I will, here's that, this is why I think it's har harsh. No state shall. That means no state can do what I'm fixing to list. That's how our constitution says what the federal government can do by saying, sorry, states, you can't do this because uh, the feds can't. So watch how easy this is. This is an example of federalism in the U.S. Constitution because it says state and what? And United States. Yep, that's how we know it's federalism. This works for you 99.9% .9 of the time. Sometimes it might just say, if I would have just given you this first part, you might have been like, oh my God, it doesn't say United States, not federalism. Although when it says no state shall, that's saying that means the federal government can. So it technically is talking about both. But 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to be able to do this right here and you'll always be successful. Let's do the same exact thing with the second one. Now I just want you to skim through here and find your ingredients for a bowl of federalism. You should be able to do that in 15 seconds. Go. Okay, we're going through here. Oh, United States, there's an ingredient. Oh, there's some more peanut butter. Oh, state. You see how that works? See what we're doing here? So this is an example of federalism in the United States Constitution because it says United States and state. Now I could read this to you. What it is saying is that um, all treaties, that's those agreements between countries, um, has to be signed um, by the federal government. They have the authority to do that. Okay. Let's go to the last one. The last one is so popular with federalism and it really screams Look at me. I'm federalism. It even uses the word powers in it. So take 10 seconds and circle your ingredients. Okay, what do we circle for the ingredients? United States. What else? States, what else? Oh, there we go. A little extra jelly there. So this is an example of federalism in our Constitution because it says United States and states. 
This one literally says, the powers not given to the United States by the Constitution or prohibited to it or buy it to the states are reserved to the states. Oh my gosh, let me tell you, this is so popular because it says if the power is not given to the federal government, the United States government in the Constitution, it automatically goes to the states. That means, oh my gosh, these writers of the Constitution better think really hard and put those powers in because if they don't list it, it goes to the states automatically. All right, remember how we have all these words for a federal government, federal, national, central, United States. When it comes to federalism in our constitution, most of the time, which one of these did they use? They use the United States. Look in every single example of federalism that we're looking at in the constitution, they chose the United States. So for our little trick that I give you, we're going to use that too. And I know I am bad about using federal a lot. And I have to get better for y'all. I need to use national, central, and United States more because i got to mix it up um, so that y'all get used to that because that's how it's done on other assignments and tests. Um, so I'm just going to, we're going to, why you even have federalism at all? Why not just say, forget it. The states are just states. Let's give all the power to the federal government. Why don't we give all the power just to the federal government? So anything we need the, our government to do, why don't we just give it all to the federal government? Why don't we do that? What could it create that the anti-federalists hate? It could create a tyranny, a dictatorship. Remember, if you divide power out to different groups, like the states get to do education, run the st their state elections, um, pass out marriage license and regulate all of that and do other things. If you divide power, that keeps it, um, uh, that helps us um, stop a tyranny from being created. If you give all the power to one person or one group, then yeah, that could be a problem. Okay, so this is how this works. Um, I am going to show you how you will begin to memorize these principles. So go to the very front and you'll just make a, um, you'll have this chart. And this is something you can write by hand and we will because it'll be part of your brain drain. The first one is... And if y'all could make the F, you know, a little bit darker. Now, if you just tell me, Miss Howard, F stands for federalism, I'll say F stands for your grade because you're going to fail. Don't ever tell me F stands for federalism. We know that. It starts with F. Um, so when we have our brain drain, I'll just have you write the F. You can write federalism if you want, but you can just write the F. But don't tell me F stands for federalism because my second grade daughter could do that. Y'all are smarter than that. We have to read the Constitution in eighth grade. That's hard stuff. So how do we find federalism? We are looking for U.S. and what? State. So when I give you a sentence, maybe two, from the Constitution, you know it's federalism if you have these two ingredients. But what if you don't? Well, guess what? It's going to be one of these other ones. And I'm going to be teaching you what those are. Okay? But federalism in the Constitution is all about how we separated powers between the United States government and the state governments. And it can't be federalism if it's not talking about the powers that are divided or shared between these. It's as easy as that. If I'm talking about the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but the whole time I'm only talking about peanut butter, well, then I'm not talking about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm just talking about a peanut butter sandwich. And I want a bowl of federalism. And this is what how we find it in the United States Constitution. Okay? Do you see how that works? And so tomorrow, we'll start with separation of powers. Now, so far, this is the other part. We have not grown these two branches yet. But we did yesterday with the Great Compromise change this branch up. We know the legislative branch had what? What leaf has it always had? Always. Congress. We've always had Congress. Yesterday, we added two more leaves. 
we added the House of Reps. And do y'all remember the other name? The one that starts with the S? We added the Senate. This one is based on population and this one is equal. This today is what our legislative branch in the United States of America looks like. And if you want to know what each branch does, we read our Constitution. And I'm going to tell you that starting Monday. We will also grow these two branches.